Hi, I'm Angela Fair. I'm supposed to be cleaning my watercolor studio today, but it's way more fun to make videos uh, sharing my love of watercolor with you. And as I was cleaning the studio, I found these. This is my stack of watercolor sketchbooks. Uh, I have a little confession to make, and that is that I am a sketchbook snob. When it comes to watercolor, as a professional artist, I use 100% water... <laughs> 100% watercolor paper, 100% uh, cotton watercolor paper. I'm very passionate about wanting to work with paper that really welcomes the flow and release of beautiful fluid color. So I've made it my practice to research and use watercolor paper that really works well with my fluid watercolor painting style. When it comes to watercolor sketchbooks, it gets a lot harder. I can buy loose sheets of great watercolor paper, but when it comes to working with watercolor sketchbooks, most of them are using student grade paper They're, that just doesn't welcome the same techniques and the same application that I'm used to using. I want to talk about that in today's video. I'm going to compare some of these sketchbooks. It's not a full-on review because we're just going to ignore the crappy ones and we're going to move right to some premium sketchbooks that I recommend sketchbooks that I have found that really make the transition from studio painter to on-the-go sketch painter uh, a lot more natural. I don't want to have to change my painting method because my paper has changed. And so that's my priority in choosing a premium sketchbook is getting something that's going to mimic the same methods I use in the studio. And I'm going to share with you why I just spent a whole bunch of money on a really special sketchbook. Uh, let's take a look. So I don't want to name names, but here are a few of the sketchbooks that I've tried and found somewhat wanting. What I look for when I open a watercolor sketchbook or when I purchase watercolor paper is I look for a surface that has a little bit of a peach fuzz feel um, that's not slick to the touch. Uh, a slick paper is going to have extra sizing that's going to cause your paint to flow differently than than it should really. Uh, what I've found is on a student grade paper with that uh, increased sizing, you're gonna have more puddles, you're gonna see paint migrating to the edges of those pools of water, you're going to see uneven drying time, and increased lifting. And sometimes that's something you might welcome as a new painter, um, the fact that you can blot and lift uh, color even after it's dried. But as you start to build your skills and want to layer paint, uh, you're going to be looking for a paper that uh, allows you to do that without moving the paint underneath. When you're working with 100% cotton paper, and this is the sketchbook I've been using for a few years now, um, your paper is going to have a little bit of a peach fuzz feel. It's uh, just a little bit more toothy. Uh, the sizing is, there is still sizing. Uh, it's not so absorbent that it's like a piece of paper towel, uh, but it, it allows for more fluidity. It also seems to me, and I've I've seen this over and over again, that 100% cotton paper uh, allows the watercolor, and I don't know why this is, but it allows the watercolor to flow and move much more readily than a paper that has a cellulose blend. If it doesn't say 100% cotton on the label, it's not 100% cotton, and you're going to lose out on some of that beautiful flow. Um, I look also for um, a little bit of kind of abstract pattern. Sometimes with a student grade paper, you're actually going to see almost a waffle weave in the paper because it's a machine made paper. And uh, whereas a mold made paper is really individually made uh, and the pattern, the texture of the pattern in the paper is going to be a lot more random and organic looking. I've been on the hunt for a really good quality artist sketchbook for a long time. And I've spent a lot of money trying out different ones that were recommended and they just never felt right. Um, what I've noticed is if I have to change my method to adapt to a student grade paper, I can do it, but it involves a learning curve every time I switch from artist quality to student grade. So here I am uh, with a stack of sketchbooks that actually do pass, and I want to tell you a little bit about those. Uh, first of all, um, actually I have one that I haven't tried yet, so I actually can't promise that it's passed, but I, I'm feeling promising. So we're going to try this one out today. Um, this Bockingford uh, sketchbook, it's called the RKB Fat Pad. Um, um, mold made, acid free, archival, those are all good words. Um, Bockingford is made by St. Cuthbert's Mill in the UK. 
and for some reason I'm not seeing 100% cotton on this. Um, it's got this beautiful slip sheet, but then it's got actually a black cover, and then the watercolor paper in here is actually quite nice, and uh, I used this when I taught a workshop in Ireland, and I really like it. It is a little harder to find in Canada and the United States, um, but I this one I really do like. Uh, I like the size, I like the spiral binding. Um, spiral binding is always nice because it whole light lets it sit nice and flat. Uh, the other uh, sketchbook that I really like, and this is a fairly new one as well, is made by Indigo Art Papers. This is their handmade watercolor Wiro pad, and uh, it's distributed by Chart Pack. You can find it in a lot of the bigger um, art supply stores uh, throughout North America and hopefully coming to Europe as well. This is a 100% cotton cold press watercolor paper. Uh, each page it has a slip sheet in between. I think this is an acetate. I really like that. It protects your paint paintings from smudging against each other uh, and just gives that little added protection and adds that value to your painting. Then as you can see here, we've got three decal edges in the book, uh, but this, is a this area right here where the paper connects to the spiral binding is actually just a little bit thinner so it's easy to tear and get that fourth decal edge and what I would do is just moisten this area with a sponge or my brush and then tear it away and uh, actually I did that back here with this painting and you can see I have now four decal edges um, that I can uh, one thing that's really beautiful is to frame this uh, in a floating frame so that it, the mat is actually um, accenting that beautiful decal edge and um, this is a handmade paper, so it's got some beautiful irregularities. If you're a person who loves doing um, kind of an organic feeling painting, you're going to love the way this paper um, allows the paint to pool and flow uh, and highlight some of that beautiful texture as well. Uh, it's a very soft paper. Uh, it's one of my favorite papers. I also love the business model. They are uh, really work to be very ethical in India. Uh, they don't use any bleach in their painting process, in their paper making process, and uh, very environmentally friendly, and also a good community supporter. And that's uh, Indigo Art Papers. Okay, so I wanted to talk mostly today about these etcher sketchbooks, and I wanted to show you how they work, so let's do that right away. I have two sketchbooks here, and I want to kind of compare the two because there's quite a price difference between them. Uh, this is the Perfect Sketchbook. This, uh, the Perfect Sketchbook is a brand name that's been around for a little while. Originally, this was a passion project for Erwin Lian, and uh, he handed the project over and worked with Etcher uh, this time for this iteration of the Perfect Sketchbook. The Perfect Sketchbook is definitely a premium sketchbook. It retails, uh, you can buy two for $119 on the website. Uh, and that feels like a lot of money, doesn't it? And maybe you're tempted to turn off the video right now. Just bear with me, we can live vicariously and be fancy as we look at this sketchbook. They also have their standard watercolor sketchbook. These come as a bundle as well, so you purchase three. Depending on the size, you're gonna pay between $55 to $104 for three. So definitely a, a much cheaper price range. Uh, so we're going to compare the two and just see what the difference is and uh, what the big fuss is all about. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying them both. I've been using the perfect sketchbook uh, as, as it was released in 2017. Uh, I've been using that for a while. You can see I've started to fill it. Um, the one thing I love about this sketchbook is a lot of times when you've been using a sketchbook and carrying it around for a couple of years, the binding starts to break down and that has not been an issue here. Oh, I saved a larkspur from our last trip uh, camping. Uh, I've been able to really take this wherever I go and uh, it is holding up really well. I make notes, I've been taking it camping, um, it's got this leather cover which is showing really no signs of wear. Um, I love the elastic which is kind of standard for sketchbooks. And, um, and the Fabriano paper in here performs exactly the way I would expect uh, artist quality watercolor paper to behave. So I don't have to think about my paper when I'm out painting, I just paint. Um, I do have to think about the bugs and the weather and the, um, the sun drying things faster than I might expect, but the sketchbook doesn't get in the way and I really love that about this sketchbook. The other thing I like is that when you're working with a premium sketchbook, it tends to elevate your work. Uh, I paint better <laughs> because the sketchbook requires it, and I must please the sketchbook. So there's that, there's that uh, factor. And uh, the few times when I have had a painting that doesn't turn out, and here's a page I tore out for my daughter to try a painting. Um, she didn't finish it, she was unhappy with her, 
her painting. Um, but the few times that I have had paintings that I wasn't very happy with, what I've done is I, I use those pages to write down inspiring quotes about art so that I can uh, still see something beautiful on the page even if I'm not happy with the work itself. Um, I haven't quite filled this sketchbook, um, but I'm going to be in a bit of a hurry to do so now that I have a new one to work in. And it'll be great to see this record of my work from the past two years um, alongside, you know, the next crop of beautiful sketches and paintings in my perfect sketchbook. Um, the Etcher cold press sketchbook, and they have a hot press variety as well, but I know myself, I know I love, I love, uh, cold press and this is the A5 size so it retails uh, three for $75 US. Uh, as you can see it says it's a 100% cotton so we still get that excellent quality paper and it feels excellent. It has that same peachy feel like I mentioned and uh, and it is a nice a nice weight which I like as well. So um, where, where the sketchbook might um, fall a little shorter of the perfect sketchbook is I don't love the white cover. The reason they made it white is so that you can draw your own art on it, uh, which I guess is a great idea, but I know myself I'm probably going to go straight to painting in the book and it's probably just going to get dirty and uh, I guess that's okay too. It'll show that it's loved. And, um, and then I'm wondering about the binding. Is the binding going to hold up as well as the perfect sketchbook? And that's not something I'm going to be able to tell you today. So, you know, review videos fall short because people can tell you their first impressions, but really try using something day after day is how you really get to know if a product is the right fit for you. Uh, does it become a part of your regular painting habit? And I'm not going to know that today, but I can show you how the paper and paint uh, perform together. And so let's do that for just now. I'm going to actually open one more page. Um, I don't like the way this first page isn't sitting quite flat. Um, there's a little bit of an edge here. Um, where it just doesn't quite fit. But if I flip over one more, then I have a nice uh, flat signature. So we're gonna use that. The really serious plein air painters, and I'm getting there. I'm, well, I'm never super serious because I always try to be playful in my work. But uh, one thing you can do to uh, make your painting, uh, your sketchbook last longer and stay nicer is protect the paper underneath the one you're painting on. Um, I have this little Ziploc bag and I'm actually gonna just feed the back of the book right in there awkwardly because it's on camera and that's going to protect that side of the paper and we're just going to play with this and see how the paint flows and today I'm going to use my portable painter since we've been talking about portable painting plein air painting and painting on the go all month in my fearless artist community at learn.angelafair.com this is my portable painter. Usually I have this with me when I'm painting out of doors. I fill these with water, I perch it on my knee, I grab my sketchbook and I'm all set to paint. Um, okay, so I haven't even thought about what to paint today, but we're really just exploring the flow of color. So we're gonna go a little bit abstract. Um, I'm gonna choose some of this lovely violet over here and see if we can't get a nice rich flow of color happening in our first stroke on the paper. And I like using the side of my brush to fill an area quickly in that first stroke. And let's kind of observe um, what the paint does. And uh, I, I like the feel of it so far. Let's touch in another color and see if we can encourage a little bit of flow here. Um, a problem with cheaper paper is an uneven drying time, so I'm watching for that. Sometimes parts, uh, it dries in a really patchy way. And here you were thinking all along that that was user error. There's uh, a little interesting thing that happens when you go from student grade paper to artist quality and that is just seeing how receptive the paper is to your paint and to your brush. It's lovely to see the paint start to move and suddenly things that were hard before um, start to feel a little bit easier and uh, never, I mean, it's not an instant fix. There's no perfect supply that's going to cure all your painting struggles, but it's really exciting to see that, you know, maybe the painting can feel intuitive and exciting. 
Uh, now something I'm seeing and I'm really hoping this isn't going to be an ongoing issue we're gonna have to actually try a second page is that I'm seeing this line right here I don't know if you can see that crease and I, I feel like that's a flaw in the paper and that that's a problem <laughs> that's not something I can fix with my brush so I'm gonna have to try a second page and see if that was just you know one single you know a one-off uh, that of course revealed itself in in a review um, which is actually a great time for it to reveal itself because then we can test it out and see um, and know for sure if this is an ongoing thing or not. Uh, I'm going to add some more water and just see what um, what stains and what moves. Um, letting uh, the, pa the paint flow a bit uh, after it's been sitting for a minute will show us you know that how, how liftable the paint is without us having to wait for it to dry completely. I really like that flow that I'm seeing and the beautiful mixture of colors that I'm getting as I let the colors mingle on the paper. Those are good things. There's a little bit of staining which is a good thing. We want the paper to soak the paint to soak into the paper a bit but we're also getting some flow at this stage which is also um, great. We want to be able to continue to ma manipulate the paint as it's starting to dry. So I'm liking that movement. All of those things are good but we really have to uh, f satisfy my curiosity as to that that flaw in the paper. Um, let's find out whether or not that's going to be a consistent issue. Okay, so we're going to look for that flaw in the paper. We're going to do that with just a nice flowing wash. I'm not listing colors today, I guess, um, like I usually do because we're really just focused on the paint and on the, on the paper. So we're gonna flow some of that Aussie red gold. Let's actually tilt a little bit and let that flow happen. Um, letting that excess water move downward. Getting that wash going. And you can see I paint with a lot of waters and this is why it's so important to me to have a sketchbook that can handle that. And uh, if you're working with a really dry brush, you might be able to get by with a um, cheaper sketchbook and that is just fine. But one that has 100% cotton paper can actually hold up to the amount of water I throw at it. Um, that's a good thing. Um, so we're not seeing a line. So that's what I, as I suspected, that little crease um, was just a matter of uh, a defect in the manufacturing process. Um, really, I mean, I should, if I want to be really thorough and do all my due diligence, I should test every single piece of paper and tell you if there's a percentage of flawed pieces. But I will flip through and take a look. Uh, I can see a tiny crease with the naked eye right here. So um, when, I, when I flip through the sketchbook, I'll be able to tell you if there are any other flaws. Um, in just a minute. I kind of like that little wash just like that. I flowed the Aussie red gold down, touched in some green gold, and it's giving me this beautiful soft kind of um, organic suggestion of a shape. So we, today we looked at four watercolor sketchbooks that have 100% cotton paper and just compared them a little bit. I really never feel like I do these reviews justice. Every person's painting process is different, so your experience with these products might be different for you. Uh, choose what works best for you. Experiment until you find the right one. Um, I've been using the Indigo Wiro pads, like I said, for a while now. I really like the premium feel. Um, I'm accustomed to their handmade paper. I enjoy using it, and so I was so excited that they were bringing out a sketchbook version. I love the slip sheets in between. This paper makes me very happy, and I love that it's becoming more and more widely available. The Bockingford sketchbooks, another one that I really like. I haven't had a chance to try a lot of offerings from the UK, so I'm sure there are other really good um, cold press watercolor sketchbooks out there. If you have one that you really love, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Uh, that was Bockingford. But the ones we were really testing out today were the Etcher sketchbooks. The Perfect Sketchbook, which I, as I said I've been using for two years, this is the same sketchbook that I've been using and love and trust. It's made with Fabriano paper which I've used in the loose sheets in my studio and so moving to the sketchbook form was just a beautiful transition. Uh, and then the Etcher uh, cold press sketchbook which is their uh, more uh, budget friendly option and uh, this one I, I did go through and count just for, just for you um, to see if there were other pages that had that flaw that we were seeing, that line in the paper and there was one other page that had a crease in it and so this is um, a 54 page sketchbook. 
two pages with creases, um, you do the math and decide if that's, if that's an issue for you. I also wanted to comment that this paper felt a little bit softer, um, like a little bit pulpier in some way than the watercolor paper that I'm used to using. And I think that was just because it is, while it is 100% cotton, it is a more budget friendly option than I'm used to using. Uh, and so it does sacrifice a little bit on that quality. Uh, I really, because I haven't used it for very long, I can't really speak for how much um, that softer kind of pulpy feel um, would bother me. Um, I was just starting to notice it as I was flipping through the sketchbook and as my watercolor painting was drying. What I have decided uh, for myself and for my watercolor practice is that I like having more than one kind of watercolor sketchbook. I don't always feel ready to paint a premium sketch in my premium sketchbook. If I'm spending a lot of money for a sketchbook, I'm going to feel kind of invested in putting good paintings in there. I really try not to put pressure on myself to pre create perfect paintings and just to enjoy the process. Um, but you know, just having that higher price tag does tend to make it feel a little more precious. Uh, and so knowing that means that I like also having some cheaper sketchbooks on hand so that I can fool around and you know just test out ideas and make paintings even when I don't feel super inspired um, without feeling like I'm wasting paper. And so I like having uh, both an excellent quality sketchbook and one that feels a little more budget friendly uh, for those days when I'm just not feeling at my most creative. I'm going to link up uh, resources for you for all of these sketchbooks. This isn't a sponsored post by any means. I've purchased all these products myself just to try and get to know them uh, and be able to answer your questions a little more about uh, watercolor sketchbooks and what I might recommend. I'm continually on the search for the next great thing and uh, so I appreciate your feedback on uh, the products you've used and enjoy using and I'll be linking up supplies in the description below the video. Thanks for watching. We are talking about plein air painting all month here on my YouTube channel and in my Fearless Artist community. That's where my online students get access to 20 plus of my online courses, as well as a members only community where we can learn together in a collaborative environment, uh, receive new lessons every month, and uh, have just a lot of fun loving watercolor together. Thanks for watching. Get out and paint. Don't just spend your day on YouTube watching videos. Uh, I want to see some creativity to show for it. Don't forget to hashtag your work Angela Fair Tutorials or Fearless Artist and that way I can see and enjoy them too. Bye for now.